Ever take a break from something, go back to it, and then suddenly not feel like you know what you're doing anymore? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm asking for a friend. There are a couple of topics that people have asked me to talk about in the past, and it's occurred to me how much my interest in them is actually related. Anyone who has watched me stream the game Kerbal Space Program over on Twitch TV knows how much I like physics. I talk about it a lot there. It's fun. You should come. But what appeals to me most about physics is what we don't yet know or understand. There are forces in this world that we can't actually detect directly. We only know about them because we can see their influence. You've heard about them. They're called dark matter and dark energy. Dark because we can't actually directly detect them. But here's the kicker. The amount of ordinary matter in the universe only accounts for 4.9% of the mass energy content in the universe. 4.9! You don't really need to know what that means, but you can understand that 95.1% of what is, is what we don't understand. To quote the astrophysicist Arthur Eddington, something unknown is doing we don't know what. I mean, we don't even have a field theory that combines the physics of the very big, general relativity, and the physics of the very small, quantum mechanics. The two don't match up. The rules of one can't be applied to the other. They break down. Put another way, gravity has yet to be included in a theory of everything. Guys, we don't know how gravity works. I mean, how fascinating is that? Now, the other thing that people have wanted me to talk about is my interest in psychology. And, you know, even just the idea of psychology fascinates me. It's the mind studying the mind. Uh, the, the brain is the only organ which is named itself. The thing with psychology is that it's such an incredibly new field. Most people don't understand that. For example, uh, cognitive psychology wasn't even a study topic until the 1950s at the earliest with the cognitive revolution. And even then, not officially, until Ulrich Neiser published his book Cognitive Psychology in 1967. That means that we've only had like 50 years of studying human cognition. 50! Guys, my parents are older than cognitive psychology. When Neiser published that book, we were only two years away from landing on the moon. We were almost ready to land on the moon, but we had not yet come up with cognitive psychology. This is just, I don't, I don't even, this. And the study of human cognition covers the sensation, attention, perception, uh, learning, language, uh, problem solving, intelligence, memory, decision making. I mean, imagine the scope of behaviors and phenomena that that all covers. That we can say that we know anything about it at all is amazing. And that's just cognitive psychology. There are fields that are newer. So much that we don't know and so much that we don't know that we don't know. And that's what appeals to me. Searching for answers. Coming up with new theories and models of understanding and then realizing their crap and building off what we learned. I think that as we as a species continue to grow and understand both the larger world around us and all of the little tiny worlds inside of each of us, we start to get a little closer to understanding our place in the universe. I'll end with a quote. The most beautiful thing that we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. Albert Einstein. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more, and uh, I'll see you soon. Hey, cat. That's right, I'm talking to you. I ran into Nate the other day, and I told him that I would say hi to you in my next video. And by the way, Nate, I mean... I think you really gotta hold on to her. She has excellent taste in YouTubers. Maybe I'm just partial.